An old one, but probably still fully functional. There's a purse. Hey, what are you doing there? I was taking your case for safekeeping since it was left here unattended. When I picked it up, the cover unlatched. I never leave my violin unattended. Ah, then no one else could have put this purse in your case. Um, someone must have snuck it in, like you. Yeah, whatever. Ah, uh, for sure. And you have a pistol in the case because... I don't owe you an explanation. It's mine. I have a gun license. Now, take the damned purse to the Baroness and leave me in peace. Just get lost. It won't be that easy. I report the incident to the Italian authorities in Venice. Hey, dick. Stealing is wrong. Can I open this? Should I take a look inside? It would be a breach of trust. On the other hand, there might be important things exactly. to be found. Search. Yeah, it makes more sense. There was banknotes. Hmm. Banknotes. British pounds. French francs. Italian lira. Much more than most would carry with them. But probably suitable for a wealthy lady like the Baroness. Okay. Uh. Look at picture. And here, a picture. Hmm. A family in a garden. From the light clothing of the people in the picture and the strong shadows, I'd say the picture was taken on a sunny day. Okay. Turn the picture over. Tough to read. It's old-fashioned German. I learned it in school, but I'm a bit out of practice. I've been writing with a Latin-style script for ten years now, like everyone else. Hmm. Seems like it says, For my dear little sister, Meta, Summer in Missouri, 1926. The Baroness must have been a young woman in 1926. She probably spent the summer holidays with her family there. Ah, I see. Pleasant memories carried in a picture. Mm. But it's none of my business. I should give the Baroness a property back. Okay. Ba -ba, ba -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Hmm. I don't know what is wrong with the game's audio. Like it just cuts out, uh, like crackles. It's very weird. Knock on the Baroness's door. Oh, Inspector, did you find the Baroness's purse? I did indeed. You did? Out of my way, James. Wonderful. Tremendous work, Inspector. Constable, Baroness. Constable Anton Jakob Zellner at your service. Uh, sure. May I ask you where this beautiful train is taking you? <laughs> to the madhouse, I'm afraid. One is close to the brink of insanity with this constant shaking and rattling. Have you ever tried flying, Baroness? <laughs> Do you know how little luggage one is permitted upon an aeroplane? It defies all reason and good taste. Hmm. <laughs> burglary at the museum. Have you heard about the burglary at the British Museum? Heard about it? I'm directly affected by it. Oh. How so? I'm in charge of the Friends of the British Museum. And for your information, I'm financing the exhibition. Oh. Exhibition? What exhibition? The exhibition in Cairo. <laughs> Where did you think we were going? The eyes of the Sphinx were supposed to be exhibited together for the first time in decades. Now that one of them is gone, the exhibition will be rather less sensational than we'd hoped. Oh. On the other hand, there's a chance that all the uproar will generate more attention and that the exhibition will still be a great success. Oh, perhaps. But we wanted to show them both together. That was the whole point. Oh well. Hello, passengers. 
Can you tell me anything about your fellow passengers, Baroness? No, not really. I could hardly care who's penned up in here with me. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. Lucien is here, the professor. Poor fellow. The eye of the sphinx that was stolen belonged to his collection. Professor Lucien is an Egyptologist. <laughs> but of course. As director of the Egyptian department of the British Museum, he has to be. The whole burglary thing really upset him. Director ah. Thomas told me he was a nervous wreck. I'll take my leave of you now, Baroness, and I do hope your journey becomes more bearable. Ha! Yes, indeed, Inspector. Constable. James? Hmm. Let's go and speak with Lucien. Professor Lucien. Door is open. <laughs> My god, the amount of loading this game needs to do, it's kinda crazy! Just a little bit. How can I help you, Constable Zelda? You know Legrand. I believe you and the Inspector do know each other. Well, what makes you think that? It seems like the two of you are running a haulage company specializing in safes. I won't comment on that. It's a matter of international importance. Tell me, Professor, would you happen to have a key in your briefcase? Uh... And if so, would it still happen to be there? Then all would be as it should. That's what we hope, at least. All the same, it would have been a simple matter for a thief to make an impression of it. Right, Professor? Oh. Oh yeah, head of the Egypt Egyptian department. And the break-in? It wasn't an issue for you? Even though you're the head of the department where it occurred? All right. The burglary was most upsetting. And shocking. And I didn't know what to do, okay? And you couldn't just tell me that. The fewer people who know about it, the better. I can't trust anyone. Hmm. Cairo. You're not only going to Venice, are you? Could it be that your journey will continue? All the way to Egypt, perhaps? I'm on your side. But the more you lie to me, the more difficult you make my job. All right, look around. I'd like to look around a bit. Of course. No, was there anything I missed? No? Seems not. Okay. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye. More bye. <laughs> okay. Come on. Load already. I believe what's his face? Oh no, in. I thought it would be. Never mind. What the balls are you doing? Jesus. No, that's just a knock on their door. Okay. Right ahead. I'd better let him read. No, I can't do that. Uh, I have pills. How lovely. Use it on him. <laughs> There's something I'm missing. There must be. Oh, hang on. I think I know what it is. I think it's the fact I didn't, like, examine the window again after the dialogue, and that's kind of holding everything back. I think, maybe? 
Yeah, it could be. I mean, I don't think it matters. I could probably start the next part of this chapter. Maybe. I'm not actually sure. Wait, what? Oh, there we go. Hmm. Maybe not then. I'm not entirely sure. I'll, I wanna, I'll examine the window again. Alright, I can just skip everything. Yeah, I'll examine the window. Cause I'm curious whether or not he'll make a comment about gloves. And then Dr. Gebhardt, maybe? I don't know, really. I'm hoping. Cause I remember going through all this when I first played. How can I help you, Constable Zelna? I want to look around. I... Oh, uh, of course. I can only make out faint traces. Whoever was in this compartment was wearing gloves. Goodbye, prof So he says, like, whoever was in here was wearing gloves. But we made no note of it. Huh. Oh well. Ba -da 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 -da. Alright, we should be able to go and talk to James. There he is. There we go. The butler, this James, seems to have escaped the Baroness. Talk to him. Good day to you, sir. Can I be of any assistance, sir? I wanted to ask you a few questions. Burglary in London. Where did you and the Baroness board the train? In Paris, sir. The Baroness was there on behalf of a charity that she supported for many years. So you weren't in London when they broke into the British Museum? We may have been, actually. We left for Dover bright and early the morning after the burglary. But it was in Paris when we first heard of it. The morning paper in London didn't mention the unfortunate event, sir. And oh. just two days later, you're on a train bound for Switzerland. The Baroness certainly gets around. Indeed, sir. We are practically always on the go. Seems like it. The Baroness. What can you tell me about the Baroness? Nothing, sir. A butler does not tattle. Is James your real name? If you'll pardon a rather odd question, are you really named James? That would be a lucky coincidence in your line of work. My name, sir, is Clive Alfred Inch. Your second name is Alfred, yet the Baroness calls you James. Madam considers James to be the only forename suited to a butler, sir. Oh, butler's career. Isn't... Butler, an odd choice of career. Butler. Many would say it's a strange job. It is true that I am one of a dying breed, sir. The war claimed a generation of butlers. Have you been to war as well? Indeed, sir. I was a groom for a cavalry officer. When you British talk about war, one is never sure which war you mean. It seems the situation hasn't changed much since the Thirty Years' War, has it? Shrapnel from a bomb dropped by a Fokker would not have wounded me in the Thirty Years' War, sir. No, of course not. Goodbye, James. Or Alfred. Hmm. There. What's happening? Move away, Zelna, you prick. God, the camera is like, it does that fixed thing. So stupid. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> if I'm able to save as soon as the game loads. Then I think I will. I can save. Cool. That's going to be the end of the first session of The Raven. So, 
as always, thank you so much for watching, hope you have enjoyed, and until next time, take care.